Welcome to the Live Games channel. Today we are going to see how the Nvidia GeForce RTX 3070 holds up in 2025 as it was a rather exciting GPU when it debuted back in 2020 as a mid-range card that was claimed to ship with the previous generation's flagship's performance at half the asking price. The only catch was the 8GB VRAM buffer and is it enough 5 years later for a card of its caliber? Spoiler alert, nope, not a chance. And to test this further, I also tested the RTX 2080 Ti as it offers neck and neck performance with the RTX 3070. We've already made a standalone 2080 Ti video if you want to watch it on the channel and I will leave links to all the best CPUs and GPUs on offer in the description so feel free to check them out. Starting with the history of the RTX 3070, in October of 2020, Nvidia released the RTX 3070 with a bold statement, why pay $1000 for 2080 Ti when you can get nearly the same performance for only $499. This time Uncle Huang didn't deceive gamers like he did recently with that RTX 5070 equals an RTX 4090 joke he made on stage as the 3070 was actually giving you the performance of the previous gen's best, the 2080 Ti, and delivering similar performance in the benchmarks. The only catch at the time was the pandemic that had happened to cause one of the largest crypto booms of the decade, making the $500 3070 cost upwards of $1000 as all GPUs with any worthwhile performance were either bought in bulk by crypto miners or scalpers looking to profit on all the chaos. This continued till 2022 when all the hype for crypto finally ended and the 3070 was finally available for $300 to $400, offering great value for money with better performance per dollar in the mid-range section. Now in 2025, with the recent and pleasant surprise of DLSS 4 to all RTX owners, the 3070 has the potential to offer great value once again as it still has the muscle to run games on 1440p but due to the 8GB of VRAM, there is cause for concern with games like Indiana Jones and Ratchet and Clank being brutally unplayable with 8GB by GPUs on 1440p high settings, making the 11GB 2080Ti more relevant of the two cards. So what are the pros and cons of the 3070? We're going to start with the pros. First, it's newer, so it's on an 8nm node compared to the 12nm on the 2080Ti. Second, this gives it a second advantage as the 3070 consumes 230 watts or less, while the 2080Ti can easily exceed 300 to 320 watts to achieve similar performance. Third, the 3070 has newer RT cores as it uses the second generation of RT technology from Nvidia, making it faster in RT-related tests provided the VRAM is not exceeded. And fourth is support, since the Ampere 3070 is newer, this means it will be better optimized for future games and it will keep getting driver support for longer than the older 2080 Ti. The one and main con of the 3070 is despite it being newer, meaning it will outlive the 2080 Ti support-wise, the curse of Nvidia's planned obsolescence will probably catch up to it before that happens since the 8GB of VRAM is a bottleneck for the 3070 and once a game requires more than the 8GB available, you end up with laggy and stuttery gameplay and despite the 3070 having the muscle to run 1440p as you will soon see, you will need to lower some of the settings to keep the game within its limits. The benchmarks will be in 1440p and I will leave links in the description for any tech on offer so feel free to check them out. The first game is Alan Wake 2, high settings using DLSS quality with ray tracing off. Both cards are on par with each other, with the 2080Ti taking a small lead, but the 3070 is keeping up while using 200 to 210 watts versus 300 and 320 watts on the 2080Ti, so it's significantly more efficient. If you turn on ray tracing on low, the 3070 surprisingly takes the lead by an impressive 16% over the 2080Ti. In Assassin's Creed Shadows on very high settings with DLSS quality, the RTX 3070 is 17% slower than the 2080 Ti. However, this isn't even the worst of it as the 3070 suffers from random FPS drops and stutters caused by the lower VRAM buffer and as expected, the 2080 Ti is unaffected by these issues. Despite how it looks, the stutters aren't that common and only happened twice over the span of an hour of gameplay, so it's not completely broken. In The Last of Us 2, very high, using native DLAA, I chose to start with the most intensive jungle scene and as you can see there is a small difference in performance and it's not in favour of the 3070 as it ends up slower than the 2080 Ti by 5.6%. 
Once you go to the settlement area, the 3070 suffers from the lack of adequate VRAM as the game uses more than 9GB with the 2080Ti, making the 3070 have random frame drops as seen on the 0.1 and 1% lows, but once the textures of the scene are entirely loaded, the 3070 once again gives us similar performance to the 2080Ti and it stays that way throughout the gameplay, so you can definitely get by with the 3070 in this game. In Cyberpunk 2077, I tested multiple settings starting with 1440p Ultra using DLSS quality with RT off and we get similar performance with the 2080Ti taking a small lead of 2%. The performance remains the same with RT turned on, but the 2080Ti is still ahead and gets better 0.1 and 1% lows over the 3070 that dips below 30fps. Next, I decided to turn on path tracing and DLSS set to balanced to avoid getting single digit slideshows and both cards can only manage 20fps so not exactly playable but you can just turn this on for photo mode then toggle it off for regular gameplay seeing as to how both the 2080Ti and the 3070 fail to give a playable experience even with DLSS balanced while path tracing is on. In Apex Legends on Ultra settings, the 2080Ti is ahead with a 9% lead but if you use competitive settings, both cards should be capable of easily giving you a high refresh rate experience in this game. In Fortnite, using high settings with DLSS set to quality, I use the replay recording to keep both scenes as similar as possible and in this game, the 3070 does manage to stay in the lead most of the time despite getting worse 0.1 and 1% lows, so the 2080Ti does end up the smoother of the two. In CS2, using very high settings, in 1440p, the 2080Ti takes the lead by 5.7%, but both cards can fully utilize a 144Hz display in CS2 just fine with max settings at 1440p. In PUBG, high settings, the lead by the 2080Ti continues with an extra 10 to 20fps over the 3070, but both cards manage to remain over 100fps throughout the game. In God of War Ragnarok on Ultra settings, using native DLA-A, both cards are neck and neck with each other, making this a near tie with the 2080Ti taking the lead by an extra frame or two. In Horizon Forbidden West, using very high settings and DLSS quality, the performance is better on the 2080Ti by yet another small 2 to 8 FPS difference but with better 0.1 and 1% lows and as expected, the game does require more than 8GB of VRAM in 1440p very high settings so the 2080Ti will be the favorable option in this game. In Indiana Jones, the VRAM is a bigger bottleneck than before as the 3070 can't even manage high settings with medium texture getting only 6 FPS while the 2080Ti is hovering 90 to 100 FPS with the same settings making this a whopping 93% difference just because of the 8GB VRAM buffer crippling the 3070. If you lower the resolution to 1080p then the 8GB of VRAM is no longer an issue and that allows the 3070 to claw back some performance making it a 3.5% lead for the 2080Ti but the 8GB of VRAM on the 3070 is nearly maxed out even in 1080p. In Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 on Ultra settings using native DLA-A, the game utilizes over 10GB of VRAM as you can see on the 2080Ti while only using 6GB of the 8GB 3070 but despite that, the performance doesn't seem to be affected as the game runs fine on both cards but the 2080Ti does still take the lead by 6% more. In the Half-Life 2 RTX demo on low settings, this being a very demanding RT based demo that doesn't require much VRAM means the more recent 3070 with faster RT cores takes the lead, managing to beat the 2080Ti by over 30%. In Spider-Man 2 very high settings, using the LSS quality, both cards give us similar performance but the 3070 does get worse 0.1 and 1% lows and in some cutscenes the 2080Ti widens the gap by nearly 15fps more over the 3070 and this is expected as the game does seem to utilize more VRAM than the 3070 has available so the 2080Ti will fare better during gameplay using max settings in this game. In Ratchet & Clank very high settings, using DLSS quality, this is a game that values and demands more VRAM 
even in 1080p, so playing it in 1440p very high settings, the card with more VRAM is going to win, as the game uses over 10GB of VRAM, giving the 2080 Ti a huge lead the more you play, starting at 5 to 7 FPS to a larger 15 to 20 FPS as the game renders and loads more textures, and the 0.1 and 1% lows are obviously better on the 2080 Ti too. In Silent Hill 2, on epic settings, with RT on, the game uses under 8GB of VRAM and since VRAM is not an issue, the 3070 does pull ahead over the 2080 Ti. So is the 3070 still worth buying in 2025? If you can find one for $200 to $300 on the used market, it does offer quite the value for money, but the problem is, in that price bracket it's competing against the likes of the RX 7600 XT or Intel's B580, both of which have more VRAM, but for the right price, the 3070 does manage to run most games well enough provided you're willing to use optimized settings to avoid the limitations of the 8GB VRAM buffer.